So you guys have, have discussed this discussion. Uh, so I'm basically going to leave it to you to, to take it off and running. And I'll, you know, chip in with any of my questions or any questions that come in from the, the gallery. They come along. So take it away. <laughs> okay. Take it away, so go, Mark, you? Okay. So basically the idea was uh, to compare a little bit uh, for what we are doing here in Slovenia with the junior national team and uh, basically prepare it with uh, or compare it um, if you, we should or could compare it to the senior national team like for example what Mark is doing uh, or what was doing with uh, his national team of Australia. Um, let me say this, um, it's really a lot of things to, to discuss about but uh, um, just a couple of uh, points uh, to share, for example, like uh, um, recruiting process, how you pick the right players, how do you pick it from the beginning or uh, how you manage to stay in contact with them uh, throughout the year because we all know that we also work with uh, clubs and uh, that kind of situation. It would be great to start here, like in the beginning and then we go from, from, from here. So Mark, if you could talk just uh, for a little bit, um, how do you do that? Uh, well, my guess is that uh, uh, Slovenia has some of the same similar problems to Australia, um, some of them. The, the system that, uh, that exists as, as whatever system that is in Australia is that there is no national league, there is no club system, there's no nothing that uh, a European would recognise as uh, being a volleyball structure. The way that we've um, the what has evolved is that there is a lot of uh, sport in uh, secondary schools, a lot of volleyball in secondary schools, but that is not a performance level that is basically um, not basically, it's it's a participation process and virtually none of those players uh, A, receive high level training or B, go on to play any kind of volleyball. So there's a, there's a tournament in Australia with 300 teams and 12,000 kids playing all in one place, but um, it has no, it's just a nice tournament. The way that we've been able to get around that is uh, the National Training Centre concept that, of course, comes from, um, well, of course, our version of it. It was originally modelled on the, the US version and evolved over time so that we identified players at, um, well, not players, That was that's the point. We, we looked for... Uh, interesting possibilities, interesting athletes, big guys, um, possibly from other sports, a lot of them from this, uh, this secondary schools tournament. And we, at whatever time we were able to, we uh, took them into the National Training Centre, so 12 or 15 of them at a time. So the, the national team that you see um, competing in BNL and beating Slovenia, uh, World Championships is the um, is not the top of a pyramid. Uh, it's basically the players that that we have. That's that's the sum total of them. Um, the the idea of identifying in identifying them is is to get the biggest ones that you can find and then teach them how to play after that and. Uh, they don't have any meaningful competition until the, they leave Australia uh, into um, uh, to European teams or a lot of them now go to uh, Canadian college because it's really easy to, uh, to get into that system and, to, uh, and it's cheap so uh, people, can, people can pay and go and study and play at some, yeah. at some level. Um, 
that's that's the our system in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah. Um, like um, in Slovenia, um, I think it's completely different. Uh, we have um, for each generation of players, uh, like for example, uh, I will speak uh, with uh, uh, my generation of players that I am leading now that are 2003 and uh, 2003 born. Um, we are, we always speak with the regional start tournament, which is um, the country is divided to six regions. Each re region have uh, uh, 14 best players from 14 best clubs. They meet in a, in a two days tournament where they compete and where um, the all the staff and head coaching uh, from the national team should be. And uh, we are looking and uh, from there. We pick up, um, like I said, um, we did it, uh, uh, 23 players, which we split then to east and west, um, part of Slovenia. And uh, we made two basic training, training camps, per, which was not training camps, it was uh, a one day um, training, uh, morning and evening. So in the west and the next day in the east and uh, from there, we shortened it out to 16 to 18 players, uh, which is basically our next generation of, uh, I would say, quality players who can compete uh, like under 17 and we go from there. Of course, uh, throughout the years, uh, players, uh, um, we miss some players or they weren't developed uh, as well or they, like they are, they are still uh, growing, growing for the past two, uh, next two years. So we are uh, strictly monitoring all, all, like I said, 30 players. But for, to recruit uh, and to 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 prepare them for some competition, we start like that. And uh, for example, we always have the same schedule uh, with the junior national teams. It's uh, Melza tournament every year uh, starting in December or uh, January at the beginning of the next year. So um, it's the Middle East European League uh, in which all the countries that are close to Slovenia, for example, Croatia, Austria, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia are competing. And I think it's a um, really great tournament in which we could uh, compare ourselves. And from the last two seasons, this tournament also was... Um, um, you could get a uh, ticket to the Euro uh, Championship in July immediately if you win this uh, competition. So uh, um, that's, that's how we uh, try to um, do the process. Uh, eventually, when we come to this 16 to 18 players, we throughout the course throughout the year because this regional starts in February and we have the next big competition, for example, in December. We start in September, October, November, try to put in each month one, at least one practice a month that we could put all the players, the 16 to 18 players together and practice. Um, um, that we see where the players are, um, we evaluate, evaluate a little bit, uh, see um, how they develop through the year. Um, and that's it, basically. Um, and that's going on and on and on every year. And uh, I think we have a really good base. Um, we compete in all levels throughout the, all the sale competitions. And uh, that's it in comparison to you, Mark. Mark, uh, oh. is is Mark? Is there is there a structure for the youth national teams in Australia? I was actually going to say that. Uh, I the, what I describe is actually the how the national team, the national senior team, comes to be, and in yeah. a way, the Australian the junior program runs separate. It's not in yeah. some way, it's not even connected. So the the junior team uh, the the they start with a really big camp um, after yeah. this school tournament, and they can have I don't know. 100 kids or, or whatever whatever the number is, uh, they charge all of them money 
Um, so the more kids come to the camp, the better, because then they get more money. Uh, and from that, they'll choose whatever the number is, 18 or 20 or probably more likely 30 yeah. for the next camp because they still want to collect money along the way because also the, the coaches aren't being paid. Um, the coaches don't work in, in volleyball. Mm. There are no... There are effectively no professional coaches inside Australia, so um, that's the system that works for the for the youth team. And they um, some of them will go to the uh, to the training centre. Um, and the ones there are there can be ones that come into the training centre from outside the the youth and junior programs, and they they'll go into those teams at some point. Um, when they're when they're good, but the basic idea of the national team setup in Australia is that we don't choose players from the youth team. So we choose players mm. from the um, from the training centre and from more like more likely from outside uh, once they once they're playing somewhere in Europe, once they're playing somewhere in Canada, uh, then we'll bring them uh, into the national team. So. The, it's not a, a linear process as it is in most, um, certainly in European countries. Yeah, I, I, I just yeah. I thought it was it would be interesting to, to kind of talk about the U.S. model, <clears throat> which is it sounds like there's some similarities to what they're doing in Australia, especially having big camps and charging people for them. Um, because in the U.S., they do they effectively don't do anything during the year. The 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 only training camps or anything along those lines are in the summer. Uh, the, the USA Volleyball holds high perform what they call high performance tryouts during or immediately prior to major uh, junior national qualifier tournaments. So the tournament will be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. The tryout will be Friday, for example. And the kids will be in for three hours to get evaluated, tested, all that stuff. Uh, all their information put into a database for, to potentially be selected into the high-performance program for the summer. And there's a couple of different layers to that. There's the national high-performance, which is what they're, they're, they're trying out. But then the regions also have high-performance. And in, in all cases, okay, they get selected somewhere along the line. Maybe they train for a little bit and they play in a tournament. That's pretty much it's not like someplace like like in England, they'll do a tryout maybe over the summer, but then they'll have tra training camps like once a month throughout the course of the, of the junior season or the rest of the season. Uh, you know, obviously we're talking much different geographic scales involved. You know, Australia and yeah. England is comparable. Exactly. When uh, when you have a exactly. monthly think, monthly uh, training for your team, what's the furthest that one player has to come to to this? Training. That's for you, Zorn. For me, Zorn. it's two hours. <laughs> that's the that's the most. Okay, so yeah, that's, it's, the, uh, that's the... basically 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 yeah, it's two hours, but it's it's actually not two hours. It's actually more an hour and a half uh, maybe. So yeah, um, yeah, we are a small country. You can you can travel Slovenia two and a half half hours. So. Yeah, uh, it's in, uh, the main difference. In Australia, Sydney to Canberra is three hours, and that's the closest. That's the only one that's under eight. Yeah, drive. I know, I know. Yeah, I know, I know. It's tough so, for for you. Mm. But no, uh, what I want to ask you, Mark, how are you um, keeping up with your players? For example, uh, when you are coaching a national team. Um, I know that you coach the players uh, which are all over the, the Europe, on all, all the different leagues. How are you managing tracks? Uh, that, for example, are you talking to them, to the coaches and that? Uh, it's, not, it's not an easy situation uh, because at the same time I have uh, my own team that's a, a full-time job. So. Um, I will have, I did have, um, more or less incidental contact with the players. So, so I would, um, you know, I would have, we would message 
every every so often. Uh, the the players would come to me if they had some some problem, some issue, um, if there's some something going something going on, somebody's a little bit injured or some story comes through to me, um, you know, that I want to, uh, we could be in a little bit more detail. Uh, my assistants also ha- independently had contact and, uh, they, cause they were not necessarily, well, not all of them were not, for one year, for example, Luke uh, wasn't with the team, so uh, so he actually had really regular contact with the guys. And maybe the most significant one is that the uh, the federation has a uh, had um, probably will have again, but uh, a uh, physio, not a full time physio, but a permanent physio who was. Um, uh, it had some, uh, I don't know what the, was part-time but regular with the Federation and his job was to uh, to track the players in Europe and in uh, Canada, wherever they happened to be, uh, following their condition, following their, their physical state, their health state. And some combination of that let us um, keep track of, of everybody. But in the end... In the end, the the number of players that we have available was you know, in the range of fifteen to eighteen, maybe twenty at a stretch, and and so um, yeah. in that way, it wasn't it, that that part wasn't life and death. Um, we didn't we didn't have significant selection decisions to make. We we just you know were collecting people bodies who were available. Yeah. Okay. Like uh, guys, bodies who are available. Yeah. I know. For me, it's um, it's pretty much the same, but it's uh, it's um, because of the clubs, and you you can have uh, um, everything. You can watch everybody and follow everybody, but uh, in this uh, uh, junior. Competition. I think it's um, more likely to stay in contact with the coach. Um, it's easier to talk to the coach now and then and to see what uh, how the players develop. Uh, and uh, because uh, these uh, junior teams usually have uh, tournaments each turn, it's on Sundays. Um, it's also easy. Um, sometimes, uh, if I have time. We, we go and check it out. Like, uh, for example, I go to one tournament, my assistant coach goes to another, and uh, like that we track uh, track our players and uh, keep in touch, and um, that's it. Um, I also had contact with some of the coaches, not not all of them, but uh, especially, I mean, some of the guys that I know, um, it's easier to, the coaches that I know personally, it's easier to stay in contact with. Um, there were a couple of situations where we had players who had who were coming into a situation with an with an injury um, that we wanted to um, make sure we were following we were following up on and and working together because when you have guys with long term injuries that um, you want to be everybody working together and um, and I. In all of those situations, I'm always pretty, or I'm always upfront with the uh, with the club coaches because, uh, for one thing, if you know when players uh, arrive in a team in bad shape, then uh, it's a um, <laughs> it's a negative thing, especially if it's unexpected. So, yeah, you always expect the national team guys to be a little bit tired, but if they have some massive physical problem. Um, it can cause problems later on. It causes problems in the club. Um, yeah. you know, coach doesn't trust the player. Player doesn't trust the club. Blah blah. Um, exactly. So mostly, I would I would talk with the coach in those situations before even the player went and say, "This is exactly what the case is. Uh, this is what we're doing. I recommend that you do this." And 
Uh, we had a couple of good, good situations. We had one time when I told the agent and the agent um, uh, didn't tell the club yeah. because, of course, the agent gets paid when the player arrives, not at the end of the season. So, so yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Um, now, uh, um, when everything is put together and you go for a training camp somewhere, like for the preparation period before before a big big uh, competition, um, how many times do you have like for the senior team? Uh, how many times do you have to work with the with the team? Like for depends. I I worked three summers with the national team, and uh, every summer was different. The first the first starting point is the competition schedule. So, um, and every year we had a really different organization of the competition. Um, this, uh, so for example, the, uh, 2017, we had three tournaments, one after the other, and the whole season was finished in three months. So we had, um, I think three weeks at the beginning of the season. And then, and from the, from the time we met, we only had two days free in a row once for three months, but we were finished at the end of, we were actually finished at the end of July. Um, so was, that was one thing. Um, other, other years it, it was different depending, like I said, on the timing of the competition. One really uh, significant factor for us is the uh, budget from the Federation. Um, so, uh, we we weren't always able to have the to- the length of time that we that we wanted to have. So, um, you know, for World Championships, we had two week preparation um, was not long after VNL. But uh, for example, Canada when we met in when you and I met in Slovenia, when all the teams were uh, were in Maribor there. Canada didn't have yeah. any break after VNL. They continued training and they had whatever it was, eight, eight weeks after VNL or something. Uh, we had a month free and then um, played and then had two, week, two weeks of preparation in Australia before, uh, before coming to Europe. So um, you know, we, we had uh, really strong limits to, to the amount of time we could spend together. Uh, and those were the, the main considerations. Another one for us actually is, is where we train. Um, the, uh, because most of the players are playing in Europe. Um, a lot of them actually live in Europe uh, over the, um, like me, for example, over the, the course of time you find a, uh, well, they, they, the women they end up marrying and, sp- and spending their lives with uh, a Czech or Estonian or something, 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 Dutch. Um, and that's where actually their homes are actually become in Europe and mm-hmm. not in Australia. So um, we did mo- a lot of training actually in Poland in that period uh, because of the um, – it's really uh, – Poland is – it's a really good place to train. The there are a lot of facilities here. They they're relatively cheap by our standards, and um, it's it's really central to, to everywhere. We could you know, we we started here for for BNL. We could go easily with short flights for friendly games and and so on. So those are the the limiting factors yeah. that we have. Okay, it's uh, the the amount of time you have is similar to to what we have in junior team. Uh, for example, uh, um, with these junior competitions is tough because it's all the time over the the year between club season, so uh, it's difficult to have more time. Uh, but uh, for example, max days for us uh, was 14. Um, also. Um, in Melza, when we play in December or January, it's even less, sometimes seven days. Uh, 
Um, so we can compare, like for example, uh, how do you structure these 14, 14 days? Uh, um, like uh, when I have, uh, for example, um, five days, uh, we practice uh, two days, morning and evening, morning and evening, and then um, we have to get, give players some space in the morning and then again in the evening, and then again, two days period with four practices then. Um, so we did like that um, for the first time um, because in um, when you coach a junior team, it's um, basically everything is new for them, uh, like uh, training load wise, it's um, a lot to process because of, uh, they never practice like that. Uh, they have a lot uh, to cope with. So we have to be really, really um, smart how to put everything together, especially uh, with the uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, how to evaluate everything to where we could go. And uh, it's basically, um, you know, uh, a lot of times listen to your, um, what the intuition is telling you, um, where the players are and uh, how to prepare them that they can be in the best possible uh, shape when the tournament comes um, because of, you don't have uh, many days off. And if you try to put a team together, you know, to play, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, how do you want them to play, uh, to build the system around them, it's a uh, really small, small um, time to, to, to practice, to, to train, and so that, that's why, um, um, how do you manage these 14 days? The first the first issue that we have, and I don't know if junior, if junior teams are different, it can be, but with, the, um, with the, the older players, the senior players, they are all carrying, well, there are a lot of small injury problems. Um, and so we can't make big changes in, in training. Um, so it depends on on when they arrive and what they were doing before, uh, before the World Championships, for example, uh, was a, was a really big stress because we we had four weeks free. We we had to have four weeks free. There was no possibility to practice. Um, but when we arrived, the guys were not. They couldn't practice. So you know, I had some things planned, and um, I had to change them after one day, and we more or less the first week of the preparation for world championships was just trying to manage the guys um, to not make anything worse. And then really we had maybe four or five days practice and some friendly matches uh, that we reached a, a good level. And, and um, we, all of our world championships was, was based on, you know, on one week of practice and three, three friendly matches the so the first thing is we have to uh, we have to assess where the players are um we don't have the uh, the luxury of having a, a big group in a training center so um you know brazilians polish italians they can have four extra guys from you know from anywhere who can who can keep the practice level high so if uh, side seven and one terrain are not practicing, the other guys can still practice. But in yeah. Australia, if uh, Smith and Smith and Mote are not practicing, then that's nobody's practicing. No some, practice. some version of that. So the the main thing for us is just to manage is managing every situation to to get to the tournament in good shape. So I. We, we worked out a way of working so that we could, um, we could still improve, we could still work on the team, we could still get better in, in some ways. I think the, the results showed that, but it wasn't by, 
having long training sessions. It wasn't by um, doing a lot of things on the court. We we had to do it in in other ways in um, in how we guided the how we guided the players, how we guided the team, and um, and the expectations we had. But really, the most important thing for us was in every every time that we got together was managing the current um, state of the players, um, improving their physical level, reducing the injuries over the course of the training camp so that we could get to the tournament in, um, in physical shape and in some way ready to play. Uh, so I have, yeah. a question. I have a question for you, Zorn, on, on uh, working with the juniors. How much time and effort do you have to spend with them on teaching them how to train both in terms of on the court and in the weight room you know strength and conditioning and all that yeah that's a great question um for example um it's it's teaching them everything uh, we need to teach them everything uh, because they're basically uh, when we start with the under 17 in my opinion, I start with a blank page for everybody. We start from the beginning uh, with a strength and conditioning coach. We have to evaluate everything like uh, their mobility from our uh, part of view. Nick. Sorry. Oh, oh, he's back. Almost. What's going on? Um, hey, I don't know what's going on. I think my computer just crashed. Whoops. <laughs> you're back now and I can honestly tell yeah, you I've, back now. I've never been happier to see you <laughs> tell me what did you hurt what, what did I speak about the last you, you got as far as they're all blank page and that was it we lost you basically right after you said that ok good good timing uh so um um that's it uh, uh for me uh the main reason uh first like i said put them back to their clubs better than they were when they came in and uh, injury free also important because a lot of times uh we can get also some some small injuries along the way because of the load um, they are not used to jumping uh, that much. Uh, they are not used to practice two times a day. They are not used to getting in uh, new fitness techniques uh, that they need to learn uh, from from scratch. So a lot of times it's happening in the short amount of time. Um, and um, um, same time, um, building the national team cult and preparing players um, to be better um, on years to come, not at that particular moment, to set them, um, to develop them, that they can come uh, um, all the way to the, to the senior national team. That is the basic idea for me. Uh, of course, it's good uh, to compete at a high level. Uh, win uh, different uh, tournaments and uh, qualified to, to Euro Championships um, because of the of the growth. But uh, mm, first part, uh, like I said, good coaching staff uh, with a lot of experience, uh, and uh, we we are trying to give them as much as possible. Um, that's it. What is the um, what from the, before. Yeah, yeah. from the perspective of the federation? What is the priority for the national junior program? It's the players to the senior team, or it's the uh, like I said. Uh, no, uh, it's it's always for me like. Uh, it doesn't matter what the the national the national federation is saying. Um, there is um, always like I said, uh, it's always right. good to qualify. But for me, for I will always say uh, first goal is to qualify. 
uh, everything else uh, we will do to qualify it's the most important goal but uh, along the way we have to always have um, a long distance uh, um, journey so um, the federation the the more we qualify the the, the, the last teams we qualify to the to, to euro championships uh, to win it's the the, the better but uh, in my opinion um, um, for the short amount of time it really quickly assess um, for example what you actually have um, and be realistic because a lot of times uh, the generation from generation the players uh, are different uh, you don't uh, know what you will get with the next generation in the beginning you're under 17 and uh, you have to go from there and uh, like I said uh, first be realistic then then um, try to evaluate uh, if we for example um, uh, our first Nevza from the beginning when we started under 17 uh, the generation now it's uh, we were, in my opinion, um, um, we competed uh, with the, in the finals with Czech Republic. Um, uh, the first one goes to immediately to Euro. We lost. Uh, we lost, for example, three-one, uh, and uh, Czech uh, went to Euro. Uh, they were fourth in European Championship at the end, at the end in July. And we went to second second uh, part of qualification period. Uh, we lost in the finals again against Romania in Romania three two, um, and the Romania was I don't know between the last teams in the Euro Championship. But um, you have to know one thing that um, in this uh, in this period in April when we have second uh, second. Uh, uh, second part of qualification, uh, it was um, too much of everything for the players. Um, it was, in my opinion, when I assess everything, uh, too much things in a short amount of time because we have to travel a lot. Um, uh, we went to one tough tournament in Italy. Um, which was not uh, which was not great for us. Uh, we developed quite some injuries, and then we go immediately from Italy to Romania, and we travel for half a day uh, with the bus. And uh, um, that kind of situation put us put us in a bad spot. We weren't fresh. We weren't ready um, at the end uh, where we should be. And in my opinion, we were better team um, than Romania. Um, and we. We 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 lost, but uh, again, um, uh, you have to see where you did wrong, and not just you, also the federation, because uh, everything you did um, sometimes because of the, also the budget and everything, you have to you have to go to some tournament, you have to compete somewhere uh, to keep the schedule full because uh, you don't have. Uh, like for example, uh, everything you want, <laughs> you know how it is. Uh, sometimes yeah. you have to go somewhere to practice and to play. Um, it's not always ideal, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, uh, let me say, uh, we learn a lot, and uh, we definitely won't do the same mistake again. Uh, but um, um, we now. We, because of the coronavirus and everything that's going on in the world, we, 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 uh, in 10 days we should start uh, our, <laughs> our uh, training camp uh, also for the uh, competition, um, which uh, would be in Austria, but uh, I think uh, this will all uh, uh, be uh, postponed into 2000, I don't know, when? Uh, 21 so um, yes exactly and uh, for me um, that's how we do it uh, so oh, go ahead, John. No, I was just going to ask how much coordination <clears throat> there is between you as the junior coach and, and the senior coach good question um 
right now um, in this uh, situation in the last two years uh, basically none uh, non-existent uh, um, uh, nothing came from the senior coach or um, uh, anything else but um, for example uh, in previous years uh, when uh, Johnny was a head coach uh, um, it was different but I, I wasn't the head coach of the junior team uh, in that period I was the head coach of Atsahavole uh, Ljubljana and uh, I wasn't part of any any uh, activist, uh, any uh, federation um, but um, I have to say that uh, Johnny had a lot to say uh, to the junior coaches and also, uh, for example, me as a head coach of Atsahawale because he knew that uh, the players for, that couldn't get uh, a club outside, uh, outside uh, Slovenia to play in good teams in Europe and good, good uh, Euroleagues. Um, it was important for him that all these players uh, play Nats Hawale. For example, to have strong competition, play Champions League, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I talked uh, a lot with him about that. And also, he, he did some um, seminars. Uh, he tried to educate coaches uh, in Slovenia. And uh, I have to say, um, it was a really good uh, collaboration from his part. So I have two questions. One is who decides the technical direction of the national team program? Is it the coaches? Is it the um, individual coaches? Is it the informal relationship or is there some technical commission, some technical director um, who decides more or less how everything will work together? No, it's just uh, individual coach. If you're head coach of the under-17, you have your system, you try to develop this system, and you go... F uh, I have to say that uh, I go from one generation to, 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 the, to the end. Like I said, um, um, I have a 2003 born, um, and I will go with them to under 23 if we will qualify you know uh, so uh, the general idea is to have a coach that goes and uh, have uh, the system around him um, we don't have anything but we Slovenia is small uh, the coaches know we are uh, we are also in contact constantly with the other coaches that are uh, in front of me or behind me with the with the different generations so we have um, basically um, the same ideas, so it's not like, but that, anything that, special, that no. In that case, yeah. you are. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, and uh, that's also good because we talk not just with the men's team, also with women, and uh, I think it's it's okay connection, and uh, also I have a meeting. Uh, not no problems, I think, in this in this department. Okay. We had we had a question come in uh, uh, from Janus. I want I wanted to ask one more. I, okay, I go ahead. See. Go ahead. So this is a the more coaching direct coaching question, and you said that your goal is to prepare the players for the national team, for the senior team. So you have one yeah. player from a small club, and uh, maybe it's a small club, and he is playing. Uh, the most obvious example is that he is the biggest guy in his club team, so he is playing uh, middle blocker, but he has some possibilities to be, um, let's say, a receiver in the national team. He is some, he is not big enough to be a middle, and but he has some good skills. He can be a receiver. So what position do you play with him in the national junior team? Yes, I have some. I will uh, just tell you one example uh, that I did, uh, that I'm doing um, 
I have a player which is the tallest, the tallest uh, in the national team, and uh, throughout the preparation period, uh, training, uh, um, you know, we saw that he could also be an outside hitter. You know, he can be a uh, good uh, opposite because, for example, we didn't have a stable good enough opposite, and uh, we put him in an opposite. And we took him immediately into the game, training game, tournaments, and it was great. And uh, in the end, uh, he played, I don't know, the best tournament in the qualification period. Uh, had, uh, um, I don't know, great tournament. He was developing great. And uh, for example, you know, I said to him, it's, it's obvious, you can be much more than just a middle blocker, you know, um, because of uh, the problems we have um, yeah. in this position. And, uh, and, and uh, I, um, for example, talked to the coach um, and um, they didn't change him immediately. And still, I think um, they are putting him on the middle, of the middle, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, if we have, um, if we have not just me as a junior coach, also the other coaches that are in front of me, for example, in the under 20 or under, uh, under 19 coach is doing the same thing. Um, yeah. We are, we are changing the players, players positions. Uh, and also we try to explain everybody involved, uh, why is better or why is not better. But uh, um, sometimes, you know, um, um, it took some time to because the clubs clubs have their own uh, own agenda. But I think uh, that in the end of the day, everybody should um, work towards the goal and the, what the best possibility is for the player, not just uh, not just uh, for the club in some moments. Okay, so good answer. I like that answer. All right, uh, question from Giannis. What is your opinions about players who, for some reason, rest, afraid of injury, economic study, blah, 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 doesn't want to participate in the national team? Should it be obligatory? Should there be a penalty from the federation? He's not suggesting you force the to play, but dot, dot, dot. Yeah, um, I didn't have that kind of example, but uh, some before me had, uh, I know also that um, um, some coaches put them immediately on the ban list uh, and uh, they never talk to him, see him or try to recruit him back. But in my opinion, uh, firstly, the, if the player really is injured, then you can do nothing, you know. If, if it's really injured, then okay, it should be... Uh, recovering and he will come back to the national team. Why not? It's uh, it's obviously you need everybody, especially if he is a talent player. And then um, on the other hand, uh, me for example, I will try to to find the problem, to find the solution for where the problem is. Why is he not uh, not uh, coming to the national team? But like I said, uh, I didn't have that kind of uh, that kind of example. I, my feelings about this are, are mostly you know, on the side of the player. Um, the the federation, of course, has some um, some goals. The and in some cases, but not all cases, the federation has some financial investment in the development of the player. Um, so this has to be considered. Uh, for the most part, the the players, they, their lives are, are really. Um, there are a few top players in the world who make real money playing volleyball, but for most of the players, the life is it's not that they make money to protect themselves to 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 be rich forever. They never have to work again. The best they can hope for really is that they. Uh, they have uh, some house, some home. Maybe they can start some business. And really, if you if you start to ha uh, cause problems for the 
the financial uh, health of the player, then this is really this is really difficult. And for most most countries, ninety percent of the countries, the the players have no insurance, they have no income protection, uh, and I I understand the situation that the players um, and a lot of players don't make enough money. Uh, they just don't make enough money to to take three months for the national team. They have to go and and work in a different job. So uh, I'm really sensitive to the the needs of the of the players in that situation. Like Zoran says, you try to find a solution um, that can help everybody, uh, but sometimes it's uh, it's just not it's just not possible. And um, um, so sometimes it's not possible, but but often you can you can find some solution. The, the Giannis had a second part of his question. Uh, it was interested in the conflict between indoor and beach. I'm guessing at the senior level, Mark, it's probably less a consideration because people are pretty much split out and specialized by that point. But maybe more at the, at the younger levels where they're still trying to figure out which way they're going. I I fall on the side of the player again, the and maybe what a comment that Zoran made earlier about what's best for the player. The it's a really big issue in Australia, um, and I'm sure in some other places as well. This this competition, but uh, for the player, and I I think that this is I think this is crazy and ridiculous and. Uh, it does. It doesn't help anybody. The um, the and the fight is not b- player. The fight is between coaches. The f- first thing is the player. So what does the player want to do? Some people don't like beach volleyball. Some people don't like indoor volleyball. Some people don't like the sun. Some people like money. If you like money, you can never play beach volleyball because um, you know. <laughs> Because you don't make the the same amount of money, so this is the you have this conversation with the player and you help him decide what the um, what the best thing for him is. And in the end, what's the where the player goes and is the most committed and is the most engaged, then that's in the end is what's best for the sport. If you force somebody to do one side or the other, they play for two years and then they go home and do something else. So, um, you know, and especially, uh, well, in the Australian case, especially beach volleyball, it's a really hard life with really small salary, um, and this is not for this is not for everybody. For countries that have small base, and there are lots of. Um, uh, the one that comes to mind is Latvia, of course, where they don't have a national team. They don't have the chance to compete at a high level, but they have four or six guys who um, who can be Olympic medalists in uh, in beach volleyball because they can put all the investment in one side. And in some way, that's also an easy um, it's an easy decision to make. So the first thing is the conflict is never. It's never the player. The conflict is between coaches. Talk to the player and and tell him and and speak with him. What does he want? That will be the best for everybody in the end. Exactly. Like from from my part of view, um, like Mark said, you shouldn't force anybody to play for for you. If I if I have to force a player to choose between me and uh, the national team and the beach volley. It's not the right thing to do. I think uh, I can explain them what the benefits are from one and from the other. But in my opinion, um, in my um, situation with the junior, with the junior team, if we don't have busy summer, if players don't have competition, I encourage them to play as much beach volleyball as possible because in Slovenia there is this. Uh, in, in every country, I, I think the summers are the gyms are empty, um, and uh, the players should be in contact with the ball. And if we are, don't have anything uh, with the national team, they should play beach volleyball. That's my opinion. Okay. Uh, no more questions at the moment. Uh, Zoran, was there anything else that you wanted to to discuss? 
Yeah, um, like um, um, I know. I know that Mark has not that that kind of um, tough situation because he has uh, players which are also um, adults have an experience uh, for COVID from for training. Uh, you know these different countries and clubs, but for me, um, with the new generation that that are coming in, uh, the toughest part is uh, communication. Now nowadays, and communication between players, how to develop um, the system that the players talk with each other, on, not just on the court, uh, also outside the court, also outside the gym, and uh, like building this uh, this. Um, platform uh, volleyball that's really important uh, you know communication skills uh, um, in which in which uh, part of the game uh, this, I think it's uh, the I think the toughest part to, to explain to the players because uh, coming in with all the different backgrounds different clubs all from all parts of the country um, it's um, in the short period when you have, uh, like, uh, for example, it's always the same problem uh, with the communication. When we come back together, uh, we have two or three training camps, two or three qualification periods. Uh, when we come in uh, third part of the, I don't know, the fourth part of the year, is the same thing, uh, communication uh, problems. Uh, it's really interesting nowadays that, uh, in my opinion, um, should be also discussed. I don't know uh, if Mark have some uh, something from his part, like uh, uh, playing wise, just playing wise uh, communication between players and also uh, outside playing ground when they are not uh, practicing. Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know a simple answer. I don't know if there is a simple answer. Um, the um, the general the the general thing for me is to have a good environment. So it's an environment uh, without a lot of stress, without pressure, without rules, without um, not no rules, but without a lot of rules that the players uh, feel comfortable uh, if they feel and that the relationships with the coaches are, okay, are more or less good, let's say good, um, that the, then when they are comfortable, then the com communication is much easier. The interpersonal relations are much easier if the, if the general environment is good. If the, you walk into a room with a locked windows and dark and you're not allowed to do this and this and this and this and this, then players don't, or people don't talk very much. But if they feel like they're comfortable in the, in the environment, in the group, people will just will communicate more. The relationships uh, are better. So I think, uh, I think that's the first thing. And, and it's the same in the training environment. If you have, the more rules you have, the more restrictions, the more oppressive the situation is, the less, the worse the relationships, the worse the communication. So I don't ever look at this specifically. I don't ever say, okay, I need to improve communication. Um, but, uh, you know, this is the, the way that I go about it. And if I see some, some problems, then, you know, can change the the practice a little bit but mostly not mostly that's the way that's the way that i do it with the <laughs> with the social media and these these things i i don't know i i actually don't think that it's so bad um i i i see the players have the phones all the time but in the teams that i've had it was even if they have the phone with them and they are talking with the phone, most of the time when they are together, they are still doing things together. They are, um, you know, did you see this picture? Did you see that picture? Sharing this, sharing that. And so it's not the communication that I had or the interactions that I had when I was 15. 
us, but the, the social environment is different. So I'm not, I don't see really massive, massive problems. Every group is a little bit different and you try to help. And uh, what I thought about, uh, about communication, what I was um, most challenged was because the players uh, that came in, they are new. The environment is new, everything is basically new and everything is, um, you know, um, the idea of competing for the national team, it's, it's a little bit stressful. It's also, uh, yeah. um, that's, why, that's why a lot of situations they don't cope as quick as possible, you know, and they don't have time to, 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 to wait for another session. Maybe in another practice they will start and then another practice they will start and another, because uh, we don't have that much of time to, to, to wait for the players to really. That's why I know that uh, the environment has to be, um, um, it's easy for them to, to, to manage to communicate with each other, the situations are easy, not tough and uh, strict. Um, yeah, and also for the for the using the their cell phones. Um, <laughs> um, the only time when we take away their uh, phones is um, when they um, have uh, on the schedule rest. That's uh, between the trainings. That's after the lunch. And uh, and the only time because um, they're in this period they are alone or, or they are in twos in the in their rooms and they should be uh, rest and not checking their phones um, because of the amount of training load and everything. Otherwise, they are having phones normally. We don't take them. I know the examples also in Slovenia when they take away the phones for 14 days and they get it. Uh, I don't know once for, per day for 15 minutes to call home and that's it. But um, in my opinion, in my opinion, yeah, it's, it's in women's, uh, in women's uh, national team. That's even worse. <laughs> but but I, I also think it's, it's, it's worse. But uh, in, in, my, in my example now with this uh, two hours rest and uh, not having a phone, it's actually good. And also players develop uh, like it's normal, it's okay, they go and they rest and not, nothing special and um, that's it basically. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's good. We did this uh, now for a year and it's, it's, um, it's okay because really um, with the amount of uh, practice and not to rest and it's, you know, you don't know what will happen the next session if the players are not uh, rested because we have also one problem in the national team, which I think is big. It's uh, we usually don't have physio um, or anybody who can uh, who right. can uh, who can uh, manage uh, fatigue and everything that go uh, goes with the with the practice load. So um, that's one big big problem. I think uh, that um, it's not in the budget. So um, yeah. and uh, and what pisses me off is. Uh, um, the the idea that um, young players couldn't get injured or should maintain um, oh, okay. fourteen days yeah, of yeah. fourteen days of practice without without uh, physio or massage or anything. So, uh, yeah, that's not a very good idea. That's uh, okay. Yeah, Yana, so. Giannis wants to know. And Mark, you, you, you kind of touched on this a bit in one of the prior conversations. Do you and or the Federation try to influence or help the players to choose a league or a team that will be best for them in their development? The Federation, uh, the Federation, Australian Federation doesn't do anything really because they don't have any expertise um, in volleyball. The, uh, personally, I will help the player as much as I can to find a better situation. Uh, the reality is that we, we don't have guys who have, uh, um, who have options, really. So from, for most of the Australian players, every year is a, um, you know, is a struggle to find any team at all. Um, and 
probably that's not going to change in the as the ask comes out of the market. Uh, so you know, if uh, if it's a choice between you know two different places, then my advice will be to go to the better one. Um, but that's not also not always possible. So um, you know, sometimes it's a uh, um, uh, they can get more money. So we have got a player in Qatar this the last year um, for for a much better salary than he could get in Europe, uh, which isn't ideal. But um, you know, when the difference in salary is a hundred percent, it's really uh, it's not a um, well. You don't have a very strong argument. So. Um, you know the the hundred percent difference in in salary is is you know you have to respect the the players you know financial economic situation um, you know and for us even you know even the best Australian players is uh, Luke Perry and he's a libero so he has big problems every year to to find a team so. Um, you know, it's not, uh, I can't say, Luke, you have to be playing in Italy. Um, don't take the job in Germany because he probably doesn't have the option, even at his level. Right. In, in my opinion, um, a coach should always help uh, a player. Like, uh, I help the player also. If I see in junior team that uh, some player... Um, which is, uh, for example, close enough to some club where uh, where they have uh, much more prospect. And, uh, for example, in his generation, players who he can uh, play with against, and he is the lone there in some club, uh, I try to connect this, uh, this situation. And um, in yeah. my opinion... Um, Everybody should uh, should work for the development of the players um, in their best interest uh, in this situation because otherwise uh, we are not developing or, or we are just postponing or I don't know um, their talent will go to waste because uh, it, it it shouldn't and I think in these junior competitions the most important is that you how to develop because you don't have a lot of time uh, on your hands and. Uh, if you can help him with the smallest part uh, in his career, uh, you should help him, like also from the assistance of the national coach to clubs, and why not? Uh, if uh, if uh, everything goes well with the clubs and uh, if they are normal and you can talk with them, uh, that they know that it is the, in the best interest of the player, I think um, it should be done. Okay. Uh, no more questions at the moment, so we can we can wrap things up if you don't have anything else, or if you got any final comments, feel free. Oh, I think we're good. We're good. <laughs> okay. All right, Mark. Anything from you? Uh, no, just uh, thanks to Zoran for the conversation, and thanks for everybody who's listening in. And uh, if you had guys have any ideas john's open to everything and i have a few moments in my day so <laughs> yeah i would like to i would like to add uh, thank you too because uh, like john and mark uh, do, doing a br brilliant job about uh, these conversations um, i think uh, it should be more of that stuff in the volleyball community and um, it's not and uh, it's easy it's just, it's just uh, not a lot of Time and space for volleyball, I think, and uh, I think w what you are doing is great. So, cheers to you too. No problem, no problem. And we got another one coming up in a couple hours, so <laughs> keep us all busy. <laughs> all right, thanks nice. everybody. Bye, Ciao. guys. Ciao.